I don't know if you've heard, but as far as the economy goes, everything is basically back to normal. GDP is back to pre-COVID levels, the S&P 500 is well above pre-COVID levels and setting all-time highs. Times are good. Or are they? Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, we're going to look at how the economic recovery is not going quite as smoothly as some news reports would have you think. In fact, we're going to look at what economists call a K-shaped recovery and see if that's what we're seeing right now. So let's jump right in. If you look at this graph here, which shows US GDP for the last six years or so, you can clearly see where the economy tanked, but you can also clearly see that it recovered rather quickly. In fact, as of the end of June 2021, US GDP is finally back above where it was before the pandemic hit. This is an amazingly fast and robust economic recovery, and we could point to a bunch of other economic indicators that would all say basically the same thing. For example, if you look at employment rates in the US, they're still a bit off from where they were before the pandemic hit, but they are much higher than they were during the worst of it. Again, it looks like the US economy is more or less back to where it was before COVID hit. The problem with this type of analysis, however, is that it masks the reality of what's actually going on. This is a form of aggregate data that hides the nuances of something as complicated as an economic recovery. I have another video on how disaggregating data can yield important insights into racial wealth gaps that I'll link to below, but the basic idea is the same. When you aggregate data like this chart does, you hide what's going on for different types of people, which is where the idea of a K-shaped recovery comes in. In its simplest form, a K-shaped recovery means that after some kind of economic downturn, the ultimate recovery happens for some people, that's the upper part of the K, but far less so or not at all for other people. That's the bottom part of the K. But who is recovering and who isn't? There are a lot of ways to cut this, but let's start with employment. We saw a moment ago that employment overall is mostly back to where it was before the pandemic. As in, most people seem to have their jobs back. But this masks the reality of what's going on if we disaggregate the data. Specifically, let's see employment levels based on how much money a particular job pays. In particular, I'm going to use data from Opportunity Insights, a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that tracks these types of things. But before we see what this looks like, if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out, I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's see if we're in a K-shaped recovery. These two lines represent change in employment levels since January 2020 for higher wage jobs ones that make more than $60,000 per year, and lower wage jobs, ones that make less than $27,000 per year. What you see is two things. First, higher wage jobs didn't suffer nearly the degree of job loss as did lower wage jobs. And second, though there was clearly some recovery for both high and low wage jobs, there's actually been growth in employment for high wage jobs, whereas low wage jobs shrunk by over 22%. In other words, yes, all types of jobs were lost when COVID hit. But not only were low-wage jobs more likely to be lost, but they were more likely to remain lost. This is a classic example of a K-shaped recovery. When we aggregate the data, it looks like the economic recovery is nearly complete. But when we break down the data, we see that the economy is recovering for some, but certainly not for all. And this isn't limited to just jobs. We can look to see how students differ based on their families' income levels. Specifically, Opportunity Insights tracks student math progress in a specific widely used online math curriculum tool. You can see the data are a bit spotty in places due to lack of reporting by the underlying tool, but the K-shape is still very clear. Compared to January 2020, high-income families basically saw little impact of the pandemic on math performance, but low-income families saw a significant drop. And it's worth pointing out that before the pandemic, there seemed to be little difference in math progress across these two groups. In other words, there was a serious negative effect of the pandemic for some, those of lower income, but not for others, those of higher income. And this plays out more or less the same for other differences like race. Unemployment rates for white Americans are nearly back to pre-pandemic levels, whereas unemployment rates for black Americans are still incredibly high. We see this K-shaped pattern everywhere. The point of all this is that saying that the economy is recovering is certainly true but it hides the reality that the recovery is happening very differently for different types of people. Those at the top seem to stay at the top and recover quickly. 
those at the bottom not only tend to suffer more at the start of an economic downfall, but their recovery takes far, far longer. So next time you see an aggregate chart like this one, or this one, or this one, all telling you that things are improving, remember that they very well might be improving, but you should ask if they are improving for everyone or just those at the top. Well, what other examples of a K-shaped recovery do you know of? Post a comment below and I'll make sure to keep the conversation going. Finally, as always, thanks so much for watching.